In this video, we're going to learn about the new tangent relationship in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I want to talk about the newly added tangent relationship in Fusion 360. Now, if you've been following Autodesk's official Fusion 360 page, then you have noticed that this was a new addition in the January 2022 update. Now, I've seen a few videos that are covering this, and from what I've seen so far, they're mostly talking about sort of idealized cases. So I want to take a little bit of a different approach, and I want to talk about where this new feature works and where it doesn't potentially now or just potentially in general based on the nature of it. So to get started, you can go to the description of the video and you can download this data set that includes a handful of sub-assemblies. The first one we're going to look at is called Simple Cam. If we expand this, you'll note that we have a simple cam and a lifter. And I've included a sketch inside of this sub-assembly that's going to control the location of the cam to allow it to spin around, and this lifter that can move up and down with a slider joint. So if we expand the joints and we take a look at simple cam, we can right click and animate the model. We can see that it rotates around. We're going to hit escape. Then we're going to go to assemble and take a look at tangent relationship. Now you can see the tooltip here tells us that we can create a tangent relationship between a face on the body in one component and a set of connected faces on a body in another component. Now the set of connected faces is important here. Now what this tool is actually looking for is going to be tangency between the selected faces. Now this is a little bit of a trick because we can't actually select more than one face and it just has to sort of figure out the tangency based on our selection. So let's select tangent relationship and I'm going to start by selecting the domed tip on our lifter and the flat face on our simple cam and say OK. Now I'm going to go back to my joints, simple cam, and I'm going to animate the model. Now here you can see that everything is moving up and down as we would expect. So again, this is sort of the idealized case for this tool. This is replacing contact sets and a little bit of trickery to get them to work, where in the past we had to use things like a rest position for a joint. So I'm going to hit escape to stop the animation. And again, this is sort of the, the best or ideal case scenario. And what I mean by that is the cam itself is a single face and the lifter or the valve or whatever you're trying to have this tangent relationship with is a perfect dome, which means that we really have one point of contact. This is going to be much easier for it to calculate and figure out. Next, let's minimize this and hide the simple cam. And then let's take a look at something called a slotted cam. To view this better, I'm going to go to Inspect and Component Color Cycling, which will change the color of all the different components in the assembly. What we have here is we have some pins that can move in slots, and then we have this slotted cam that can rotate around. Now, the reason that I have this cam lobe here that's concentric and this one that's not concentric is I want to highlight a problem. So this is probably another one of those idealized cases, but let's focus on a couple different ways that we can do this. First, I'm going to go to Assemble, and I'm going to say Enable Contact Sets. In the browser, I'm going to right-click and create a new contact set between this cam and between this pin here, and say OK. When I do that, it allows me to rotate this back and forth, and it's going to stop anytime there's solid body contact. Now again, because this one is concentric, we have no motion of this pin. It's not able to move back and forth. Let's go ahead and go to Assemble and Tangent Relationship. My first component is going to be the outside face of this pin, and the second selection for the component is going to be the slotted face. We're going to say OK. We're going to go to a front view. Now when we rotate this around, you can see that that pin is moving in and out. This is exactly what we would expect. But you'll notice that as we get to a certain position where it begins to violate this slot, you'll notice that it flips and it jumps out in order to maintain its relationship with this slot here. Now you'll notice that it never comes back. And part of the reason it does this is because this slot allowed it to move in and out without limiting its motion. 
So if you have a set of joints, such as a slider joint or a pin and slot, then you need to be careful when you're setting up these tangent relationships, because if one of them is going to get to a position where it violates the other one, so you can see here, there is a little bit of room left for this slot. And if we get to a situation where we move fast enough, sometimes we can get these to flip in order to get it to actually solve that. So again, this is probably another one of those idealized cases. And if I didn't have the constraint of this slot here, then this one would probably be fine. But again, the intent here is not to show you the idealized case for this, but to show you when it might break so you can understand what's going on and how you can fix it. Next, I want to highlight a problem with this cam and lobe. Now, the cam and lobe is something that has been tricky for us to simulate really in most CAD packages. And that's because we really need a spring force in order to keep this valve pressed up against the lifter or the follower. So what I want to do here is I want to talk about the way in which we're going to use these tangent relationships and the problem that I've found that it presents. So first I'm going to say tangent relationship. I'm going to select this curved face and you'll notice that it splits in the middle, but that's okay because really what we're concerned with is that edge. So we're going to select that for side one and this for side two. Again, what it's looking for is the tangency around these selected faces. So think about if you were going to create a fillet, it would have that tangency going all the way around that edge. So we're going to say, okay, I'm going to go back to a front view and I'm going to rotate this cam lobe. So you can see it works as intended. Everything here is perfectly fine. And that's what we would expect to see. I'm going to capture its position and I'm going to go to assemble tangent relationship. I'm going to select the rounded edge of that valve and then this curved edge here. And I'm going to say, okay, now if I go back to a front view and I begin to rotate this around, you can kind of see that it's mechanically locked. Now it's having problems rotating around and actually solving this. So if I go into the cam and lobe and into the newly created relationships folder, what I want to do is I'm going to temporarily suppress the one between the cam lobe. So now you can see we can move this freely. It's not causing any problems. And what I want to do is I want to move this up and down just to make sure that this works. So that still works fine. I'm going to revert its position. I'm going to right click and suppress this one, right click and suppress this one and make sure that everything still freely moves. I'm going to revert that. Now, again, this is locked. So what's going on here? Why are we getting into this situation where we have a mechanically locked scenario? Well, the best I can tell is that it's having trouble calculating the relationship between both of these because it's with a single component or a single body. And it's trying to figure out the tangent relationship between these points of contact. So once again, if we suppress one of these, it works perfectly fine with the cam lobe. However, if we suppress the cam lobe and we make sure that this one is unsuppressed, cam lobe is fine. This moves the valve up and down. So there are cases where the relationships might be fine, but you might run into a situation where it's just having trouble struggling solving that. So when I figured this out and I began playing with it, I tried to come up with a solution. So I created this cam lobe two. This cam lobe two, the outside was created with a spline. So it's a single face selection. And I thought maybe this was potentially the problem, but it did not solve the problem. So once again, I created this relationship. I allowed it to rotate. It moves around just fine. And then when we create that tangent relationship again over here, everything seems to work, but it kind of just mechanically locks itself. So I don't exactly know why this is an issue because both of those tangent relationships work individually, but this is something that I've run into. So if you're excited for this new edition of tangent relationships and you wanna design your mechanical assembly, well, just be prepared that you might have some limitations here. In order to make sure that we understand these, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into relationships, I'm gonna go back to this one and I'm gonna delete it. What I wanna do instead is I wanna create a contact set. So we already have those enabled. I'm gonna create a new contact set between this valve and this follower. And then I wanna modify this joint's limits. So if we go into the joint folder, you can see that we have slider here. I'm gonna edit the limits. I wanna add a min and a max. And as I begin to drag this, what I wanna do is I wanna identify these min and max values. 
So it looks like zero and we'll say just somewhere around here, 140. Then the rest position, I'm gonna set at zero and say okay. So now if I rotate this cam around, theoretically what we should get is this relationship allowing us to rotate. But you can see here that it's having problems again mechan mechanically. So if I temporarily suppress this, you'll notice that I can move the valve. And what happened was my limits are outside of the range that works for this. So because my rest position is pushing that follower a little bit too far, it's having trouble solving it. So the way that we fix this now is we're going to edit those joint limits. And the zero value actually needs to be a bit further and we need to figure out where that position is. So I'm gonna set it to go between one and actually let's set this to maybe somewhere around 0.8. That way the rest position is a little bit more realistic. Then we can go back and we can unsuppress this. And once again, we can allow it to rotate and you can see that we're not quite getting all the way to that position. So now that we're, we're close, we're gonna capture it, go back to our slider joint, we're gonna edit the limits and we're gonna reduce this. Let's say 0.6 gets us a little bit closer 0.7 is probably better, 0.75 even better. We'll say okay. We're gonna rotate this around, capture its position, and theoretically this should snap back. You can see that. And we're just gonna to have to play around with these numbers. Now, theoretically, if you designed all this in place, you would know exactly what these numbers are. But realistically, it's gonna take a little bit of work and playing around for us to figure these out. So I'm gonna go back to 0.65 and I'm gonna set my rest position at 0.65. We're gonna say okay. And now, once it solves this, you can see that we can rotate this around. But once we get to that contact set, we're sort of falling into that same trap again, where it's stuck and it's pushing and it's mechanically locked. And we know that this works because if we suppress this, you can see that we are able to push this. So I'm just kind of thinking that we're in a situation where we're going a little bit outside of the actual available processing to be able to calculate these relationships. So my suggestion for using this tool is to simply just use it sparingly for right now, play around with it, see what you can do with it, but then at some point, hopefully it'll get updated and it'll be able to calculate these situations or potentially I'm just doing something wrong and haven't quite figured out how to use it yet. But these are the things that I've run into playing around with it and I wanted to make sure that we understood sort of the idealized case where it works great and some of these cases where it's just fighting us a little bit. The last assembly that I have here is called contact set and what I wanted to do was show this one because this is an instance where contact set is the only option that we have. So we have contact sets, we're gonna create a new one between these two components. And as we rotate this around, what happens is as soon as there's solid body contact, it begins to turn that wheel. Now you'll notice in this case, what's actually happening is we don't have a large enough chamfer on this corner. So what we need to do is we need to activate this subassembly. We need to find that chamfer feature. I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna increase it so it's a little bit larger. And now as we rotate around, we should be able to get closer to actually solving this. And you can see that we're close, but it's not quite enough. So this allows us to sort of evaluate our mechanical assemblies, figure out if our relationships are working okay, and figure out what we need to change. In this case, we could update the chamfer a little bit more. Instead of using an equal distance, we could use two distances, and we could make the angle a bit steeper, and we could sort of manipulate these and say okay. And now as we rotate this around, we have one side that is tapered a bit more, and you can see that we are able to push it and then if we come back the other way, it's not quite enough and it gets mechanically locked. So this is a one direction assembly and allows us to rotate this one position. In this case, we've got five, one position for every 360 degrees of rotation of this large wheel. So again, this is something where we really can't use things like relationships between other joints using a motion link and we can't create that sort of standard gear relationship and we can't use things like a tangent relationship. So this is one of those ideal situations where using a context set is a perfect solution. And the other ones, we kind of have to figure out, just depending on our specific assemblies, if a context set's gonna work 
if the tangent relationship is going to work or if we need something in between. So at this point, if you have any questions on these or if you have a specific assembly that you've had trouble setting up, please send me an email, support at caducator.com. Let me know what you're struggling with. And if anything in this video didn't make sense, then please let me know as well. Leave a comment below. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.